Hi! So today I thought I'd talk about this, which is the Boss Loop Station, and it's the RC3 version, and I'm going to be demoing it with the violin. I This is not sponsored. I bought this with my own money. I actually got it at a pawn shop for about $100. These retail for about $200, so I thought I got a really good deal, but the more I play with this, the more I realize I don't think it's worth $200, and I'll go into that. Um, so try to, I'd look for a second hand one that's cheaper. Uh, but basically what this allows you to do is it allows you to clone yourself on stage. I clone myself a lot for my videos and I've been trying to think of a way I could clone myself live so that people aren't all, I don't know, you're using pre-recorded violin tracks, you're a fake because there's no other way to play a duet with myself, right? But you can actually clone yourself live with a loop pedal. So I'm going to talk about this. Um, basically the reason why I don't think it's worth the extra $100 is they did add these cool features, like they have a rhythm button, you can switch between different tracks, and they have a tap tempo button. So if you make your loop and you're like, oh that's too slow, you can tap it to speed it up at another tempo. Um, the rhythm and the changing between tracks, it's a good idea, but this is on the floor. <laughs> You're using your foot to click this big giant pedal. And then you have to like get down and push these little tiny buttons to like change the rhythm. Maybe you're tired of hearing the same hi-hat and you want to go to a different beat. Well, you have to push this button, and I feel like that's not practical <laughs> in a performance setting. That's, you know, you might as well get your backing track all hooked up and ready to go and just play with that. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like that's too much to do when you're performing. Um, they do have something you can plug into this stop memory shift. And then you can plug this into a second pedal that they sell that makes these functions more accessible in a live performance. But if you're going to hike up the price by $100, you should at least include functions that you can use in a live setting. Like, I don't like that you have to buy a whole other piece of equipment just to use some of these more easily. I think that's... I don't know. That's just... that. Maybe that's just me. Um, but basically, how this works is you first take your violin or your microphone or whatever and you put it into your input. I have a mono input, it's a violin, so I put it in the mono and then I plug it into a amplifier, so I have a mono output and once you do that, it lights up so it's turned on, there's no switch. It does require a 9 volt battery just inside here, you untwist this and you stick in the 9 volt battery. Those, that's those like square, well, rectangular ones. Um, so then you basically have your pedal all set and ready to go, you know, if it's plugged in or something. Um, and so what you can do is you can click it once, boop, and now if this was plugged into a violin, it would be recording whatever sound it is hearing. <laughs> um, and when you click it again, you'll see this little green light come on, and that basically means your loop was recorded, and now it is repeating. So whatever section of music you're playing, it's now just repeating that over and over and over again. But you'll see the red record light is still on, so now it is considered to be overdubbing, and you can add as many layers of sound as you want, I think. I don't think there's a limit. Maybe there is. Um, and then it will add those to your repeating loop. So um, if you click it a third time, doop, the red light turns off. And basically that just means now you are just able to play on top of your loop. Maybe you have your backing track all set and ready to go. And you just want to improvise. Now's the time to do it. It's not recording anything. You're just playing on top of your loop. Now, if maybe you didn't like how the last layer of sound 
turned out, you can hold it for two seconds and it'll say UN, which basically means undo. So it removes that track. Um, it doesn't remove the loop, it just removes that last track that you heard. If you click it again for two seconds, it'll say RE for redo, and that basically adds it back. So if you liked how it sounded, and then you like regretted getting rid of it, you can bring it back. Um, that could be handy too for like bringing in another layer of sound that maybe you don't want for a particular section. Um, but you also have to like anticipate that it takes two seconds of holding the pedal down, which I find that hard to do when you're in a tempo to like think, all right, two seconds from now, I want that to go away because you're kind of in your own tempo. So um, to turn it off, like maybe you're done with the song, you just click it twice really fast and it shuts off. <laughs> um, well, it shuts the song off. It doesn't shut the pedal off. Uh, to shut the pedal off, you have to unplug everything. Um, the double click? <laughs> I struggle with the double click. I find it hard to click something twice that fast when you're playing like a really slow song or if you're like maybe doing something difficult to like have to step on something twice really fast is not something I find easy to do. Maybe I just have to practice it more. but. So once again, you can buy their extra pedal to make it a little bit easier, but I don't like it when people make things difficult just so that you buy extra equipment. That just bothers me. Something cool about this though is you can hook it up to an MP3 player and it becomes part of the loop, which is really handy. Um, so. Uh, the only problem with it is when you click this to like start overdubbing, it doesn't stop your MP3 player. This is just a regular MP3 player doing its MP3 player things. <laughs> and um, so you have to make sure it doesn't go to the next song or that it is the right duration for the loop so that it actually can loop properly. Um, you can also program sounds into the pedal, but I feel like that's too much hassle. <laughs> so when it's all said and done, <laughs> and you're ready to go on to the next song, you can hold the pedal down with your foot for two seconds, and it'll say CL for clear. Clear. And that basically just cleared out the track. The only problem with that is when you click it down and you're holding it down to clear, there's about two seconds where it will start to play the loop. So that's kind of annoying. You have to either cut the sound from your amplifier or you can also press this button here, which it says right, but then underneath it, it says delete two seconds. So if you hold it down for two seconds, it'll start blinking DL and then you have to press it again and it'll like flash really quickly and that means it has deleted that track. So that's how you can delete it silently. And then there's also these little volume knobs. <laughs> this big knob controls the volume of the loop. And this little knob says it controls the volume of the rhythm, which is not a very practical tool to use <laughs> with this um, pedal. But I have also noticed that the rhythm volume also is your input so if you want the violin track to be that you're playing now to be very loud you can just crank that up a little bit louder than your loop and then your live track your most live track will be the loudest um i don't think it should be that much louder than the loop i think it sounds good if they're pretty close to being a similar volume but yeah so this is the loop station, um, you can, it has a DC in adapter plug thing, so you can plug it into the wall if you have like an adapter, and then it also has a USB um, import thing so that you can hook it up to your computer and play WAV files if you wanted to. So that's pretty handy. Uh, 
in general, I think it's good for its basic functions. This extra stuff, you'd be better off buying a better pedal, um, but then it also costs a lot more. So I'm going to demo this. Oh, it also has stereo in and out. I don't think I mentioned that, but I don't really use that. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna demo it and I'll let you know what I think.
So that is the Boss RC3 loop station demo for the violin. Please note that this is like a practice video. I definitely don't have all my stuff together <laughs> when it comes to using this thing. Um, I've This isn't the first time I used it. I definitely did a little bit before I got my camera, but I'm pretty new to this. <laughs> um, what I like about it is that this definitely opens up a whole new world as far as performance goes. I like that I'll be able to use my backing tracks with it and perhaps extend them beyond just two minutes. <laughs> so um, a lot of the time I've been wondering like how do I play three hour gigs if all my songs are two minutes long? Like I'm gonna need a lot of songs. But with this, I'll be able to loop over things and harmonize and improvise and do all sorts of other things. So that's really exciting. Um, and the thing that I didn't like about it, and I, I guess I need more equipment to get this to work. Um, when it records a loop and then you overdub and you record that and then you overdub again, it kind of squishes everything down to have the same volume and sometimes I want certain tracks to stand out more than others. So for example with the Skyboat song, the melody and the harmony just kind of squished together <laughs> as a bunch of sound and by the time I got to the third harmony I felt like you couldn't really hear the melody anymore. It just kind of sounded like sound. And then I was just playing another harmony, which, <laughs> I mean, it all harmonized, but it, it didn't really sound like anything. So I think in hindsight, I should have played the harmonies first and then the last track would have been like the melody. But I just feel like, at least with this folk music, you need the melody first. You can't just have a bunch of harmonies. It's not like pop music where you can do like, a bunch of rhythms and stuff, you know, at least for a Skyboat song, that doesn't really fit. So I'm gonna have to think about that a little bit more, but for the most part with like the two tracks, I think that this sounds really pretty and I'm really excited. <laughs> so um, that is the looping pedal. I th I'm gonna mention the other equipment that I used and I've been thinking about making videos about them as well but I don't know how well this video is going to go over if people want to know about this stuff or not. So I use the LR Bags Violin Bridge Pickup, which is okay. It's, I've been using it for about two and a half, two and a half years now. And it, in general, I'm happy with it, but there definitely are some things that aren't so great. Like it picks up every bow noise. Ever. So if you've done a lot of tone work where you focus on your tone and you'll know that there's a lot of bow technique that you have to learn and all of that gets picked up <laughs> and amplified when you use the L.I. Bags Violin Bridge Pickup. So you have to play very dainty with like no tone to get it to sound good. I don't know. I don't really like that. But in general I'm happy with it. I use the Fishman Loudbox Mini for my amplifier, which is a fantastic amplifier if you play violin. I tried out many amplifiers, and they're all made for guitar, but um, a lot of amplifiers fail with sustained notes that are double stops. So if you're looking for an amplifier and you play violin, practice with uh, double stops. And then the third thing that I used was the LR Bags Equalizer, and that's, I think it's a really good equalizer, but I'm just using it to reduce the bow noises that the bridge is producing. So, <laughs> the bridge pickup. So, that is the equipment that I use, and if people want to know more about that, or if this video does okay, it's kind of a new thing. I don't know how much people would want to watch this sort of stuff. Um, I could make a video about that stuff, but... For now, I'll just leave it at just talking about this because I feel like this is pretty cool and I'm pretty excited about it. But thank you for watching and I hope you have a good week. Bye!